Welcome back to my channel. This video teaches about population with a focus on the Caribbean context. Population refers to the total number of people living in a particular area at a particular time. There are four general areas of focus in the study of population. These are population distribution, population density, population structure, and population change. These four aspects of population may be illustrated by different methods. A dot map may be used to illustrate population distribution. A choropleth map illustrates population density. A population pyramid represents the population structure, while line graphs may be used to illustrate population change. Let's first look at population distribution. Population distribution is the spread of people over a particular area, or it is where people live and where they do not live. Now, where people live over a particular area can create a pattern. This pattern is usually uneven with some places having many persons while other places having few or no persons. Population distribution can be best illustrated by a dot map like the one you are seeing here of Jamaica. Now, the key shows that each dot represents 1,000 persons. This means that the places where the dots are located on the map indicate where 1,000 or more persons live. The empty spaces does not mean that no one lives in these places. They indicate that less than 1,000 persons live in those places. Notice that people are mainly located along the coast of the island. Notice also that if we compare the population of Kingston and St. Andrew, for example, with the neighboring parish of St. Thomas, we see a clear contrast with more people living in Kingston and St. Andrew. As we study population, we become curious about the reasons for these patterns and try to find the correlation between these locations and other factors. Population density is the concentration of people in a particular area. We can define it as the number of persons per unit square. So it compares total population with land size. The map being shown is called a choropleth map and is a common method of showing population density. On this map, each shade of color represents a different density value. Unlike the dot map, it does not indicate the exact places where people live or do not live. In fact, it gives the impression that people are evenly distributed within each parish. However, this map is very useful when comparing the population densities of different places. 
So let us try to, you know, differentiate between the population distribution and the population density. Let us look at these two places. Notice for both places, the land size are the same and the number of persons are also the same, which means that both places have the same population densities. However, the distribution of people over the two areas is quite different. In one area, we can see people distributed in three groups, while in the other area, they are distributed in two groups. Now we can calculate population density by dividing the total population of a country or an area by the size of the land of that area. So for example, If the population is 2,961,167 and the land area is 10,830 kilometers square, we can calculate the population density by dividing the population by the land size, which gives us 273 persons per kilometer square. What does this mean? It means that for every kilometer square unit, 273 persons can be accommodated if they were evenly spread across the land. However, this is never the case which is why we also have to look at the population distribution separately. Now in the Caribbean, Guyana has the lowest population density with about 3.5 persons per square kilometer compared uh, with Jamaica, for example, with 249 persons per kilometer square. On the other hand, Barbados and Haiti have the highest population densities with over 1,000 persons per square kilometer. Notice that we can, even though these different countries have different land size, we are still able to make comparisons between their population densities because the population densities focus on an average. Now, what are the factors which are responsible for the distribution of people over an area? Abraham Maslow spoke about people having a number of needs which they are trying to meet. And certainly many of these needs can be met through a person's location. But people may not always have the option to live in their ideal locations. So there are other factors that are at work. Nevertheless, as far as it is up to individuals to decide on where they live, they may first try to satisfy their basic needs, for example, for food and for clean water. So factors such as the soil, which is necessary for growing crops, as well as access to water, are important factors that will help to determine where people live. 
People may also settle where they feel a sense of belonging and a sense of security. Now, these, of course, will mean different things to different people. As people become more financially stable, they may have greater opportunities uh, to choose and to satisfy their higher level needs, such as their self-esteem needs and even their need for self-actualization. Such persons may choose to live in neighborhoods where they can maximize their benefits. Now let's talk about the factors influencing population distribution. Among these factors is that of relief. Relief describes the height and shape and gradient of the land. Flat to gentle lowland areas are generally preferred for settlement. Most towns in Jamaica, with the exception of Mandeville, are built on low flatlands. These towns have the largest population. Kingston, which is not just a parish capital, but also the capital of the country, is located on the Ligony Plain at the foot of the Blue Mountain. The city of Kingston has a population of over 1,000 persons per kilometer square. This is largely because the land and their is uh, suitable, sorry, for the construction of buildings and roads. In contrast, the Blue Mountains have a population density which is less than 100 persons per kilometer square. This is because the landscape is rocky and steep. There are fewer resources and less opportunity for different types of farming. Construction is also very difficult and expensive. Access to the coast is also an important physical factor. Though there are some Lowland areas most Caribbean countries have hilly interiors and are flat mainly along their coast. Coastal areas are also attractive because of easy access to port facilities. Many tourist resorts are also developed along the coast to take advantage of the sea and sand attraction. This in turn encourage local population to settle in these areas. Another physical factor is climate. Though most Caribbean countries experience a tropical marine climate and a few experience equatorial climate, variations in the physical landscape also produces a local climate within this general climate. In Jamaica, for example, hilly areas generally enjoy a cooler temperature than lowland areas, which by itself is generally more welcomed. However, due to what we spoke about, in terms of relief, there are negatives that are associated with these hilly areas. And therefore, for most hilly areas, the population is generally sparse. 
Now, one exception is Mandeville in Manchester, which is a plateau. This means that while people are able to enjoy a cooler climate, construction is still not as difficult as other hilly terrains in the country. Soil is another important physical factor. During the colonial period, where agriculture was the dominant economic activity, soil had a great influence on where people settled. This is because the large sugar estates occupied the most fertile lands. Thus, large settlements developed around these agricultural areas in a number of Caribbean countries, such as Jamaica and Guyana. Alluvial soils are found both on coastal plains, such as Pedro Plain in St. Elizabeth, and interior valleys, such as Luida's Vale in uh, St. Catherine. And what about vegetation? Places with unbearable vegetation, such as the thick forests and swamps, are often unsuitable for human habitation. As such, they will have low population densities. Thus, the tropical rainforests of Guyana have low population compared to its coastal areas. However, it must be pointed out that the coastal area of Guyana is actually a swampy area, but the drainage has largely been managed. The same is true about some places in Jamaica, like Portmore, for example, and parts of Kingston, which are naturally swampy areas, but they have experienced land reclamation. Nevertheless, there are still some swampy areas which are largely untouched and therefore have low population densities. Natural resources also attract a population to an area. The town of Mandeville in Manchester, Jamaica, not only grew because of its climate, but also because of the bauxite in the area, which provided jobs for people in the area of mining. Similarly, petroleum in Southern Trinidad resulted in the development of a number of industries such as petrochemical industries along western Trinidad. This have resulted in towns such as San Fernando developing with high population. Now let's look at socioeconomic factors. Urban areas in the Caribbean have high populations as many rural residents migrate into these areas in search of employment, educational opportunities, entertainment, and greater social services. This is the case of Kingston in Jamaica. The rural areas are mainly focused on agriculture, but many persons have less interest in agriculture and are seeking white collar jobs instead. Then there are Political factors. The practice of capturing lands, which started after the abolition of slavery 
in Jamaica has continued to these days. Through Operation Pride, launched by the former Prime Minister, P.J. Patterson, lands were made available and affordable to squatters. Also, affordable housing solutions have been created through the National Housing Agency. This has also impacted population distribution. Now on to population change. The size of a population can increase or decrease with time. This is dependent on a number of factors. One such factor is a fertility rate, which is the number of children that the average woman in a country will bear in her lifetime. The earlier a woman begins having children, the more children she is likely to have. In the past, women got married earlier and started having children earlier, which means that they had more children in general. Higher levels of study and careers were often sacrificed so that they could attend to their duties as wife and mother. However, fertility rate has now slowed down in many Caribbean countries. This is because women are delaying marriage and childbearing to pursue higher education and careers. Furthermore, there is a greater availability of contraceptives. Another factor is birth rate. Birth rate refers to the number of babies born alive per 1,000 persons per year. Birth rate can be calculated by dividing the number of births by the total population and then multiplying the value by 1000. Since fertility rate has fallen, birth rate has also fallen throughout the Caribbean. Death rate refers to the number of individuals dying per 1000 persons per year. To calculate death rate, we multiply the number of deaths by 1,000 and divide it by the total population. When we talk about death rate, we will also need to talk about infant mortality rate as well as child mortality rate. Infant mortality rate is the number of deaths in the age group 1 to 12 months per 1,000 live births per year. Child mortality is the number of deaths of children up to age 5. Now, natural change is a difference between the birth rate and the death rate. When death rate exceeds birth rate, there is a natural decrease. However, when birth rate exceeds death rate, there is a natural increase. Natural increase is expressed as a percentage. Now, population change is best depicted by line graphs. One graph which shows a combination of three line graphs is the demographic transition model or DTM. 
the DTM shows the changes in birth rate, death rate, and the total population. The gap between the lines depicting the birth and death rates gives us the natural change in the population. When the death rate is above the birth rate, it indicates a natural decrease. When the birth rate is above the death rate, it in indicates natural increase. Notice that the model shows a number of stages. At stage one, both birth rate and death rates are high and fluctuating. Birth rates are high due to factors such as a lack of birth control, as well as the need to have many children to work on the land and so on. Contraceptives are also generally unavailable and unacceptable in some places. Death rates are high due to famines, wars, and even diseases. At stage two, birth rates remain high, but death rates decline sharply. This usually results in rapid population growth. This results from an improvement in sanitation, disease control due to better health care, and improvement in transportation, which makes food more readily available. At stage three, the gap between birth and death rates narrow, narrows as there is a rapid decline in birth rates. However, birth rate continues to fall, but at a slower rate. Rate of population growth has slowed down. Birth control are more readily available. Women are pursuing higher education and career goals. Thus, they have children later in their life, which reduces the fertility rate. At stage four, both birth and death rates decline further and are both very low. As such, population growth is very small. Most women wait until they have completed their studies to start having a family, and many desire only a few children so that they can give them a better quality life. Life expectancy continues to increase as medicine improves. Nevertheless, older persons contribute more to death rates. Another factor influencing population change and is not represented in the demographic trans transition model is that of migration. Migration is a movement of people from place to place. Immigration is a movement of people into a country to settle there, while emigration is a movement out of one's country to settle in another country. Net migration is obtained by taking the difference between immigration and emigration. Many Caribbean countries have been experiencing negative migration rates, which means that emigration exceeds immigration. That is, more people are leaving the Caribbean to stay permanently in other countries. Life expectancy refers to the number of years people in a particular society are expected to live. High life expectancy tends to have a positive effect on population growth. In countries with very low expectancy, the population tends to grow very slowly or even to decrease. 
Then there is government policies. The government of a country can either encourage the increase of population or the decrease of population. The government can slow down or speed up the rate of migration as well as birth rate based on the types of policies. As it relates to natural population change, governments can encourage or discourage births. A pro-natalist policy is a population policy which aims to encourage more births through the use of incentives. An anti-natalist policy is a population policy which aims at discouraging births. In the Caribbean, this has been done through education about family planning as well as increased access to contraceptives now the other aspect of population is population structure as population changes, these changes can impact the structure of the population. Population structure refers to the type of persons who make up the population. Population structure is best illustrated by a population pyramid. The base of the population pyramid shows the youth while the middle shows adult and the top of the pyramid shows the elderly. Also notice that the bars to the left shows males while those to the right shows female. Show females rather. Population structure varies throughout the Caribbean. For example, Jamaica has a larger youth population than Barbados, since the fertility rate of Barbados is smaller. While the fertility rate of Barbados is 1.6 births per woman, that of Jamaica is 1.9 births per woman. Per woman, sorry. Also, while the net migration for Jamaica is negative 3.824 per thousand population, that of Barbados is negative 0.276 per 1,000 persons in the population. This means that there are more persons migrating from Jamaica. The main reason people migrate is to seek employment, which reduces the population of the adult age group. This is where we stop. Thanks again for watching and remember to like, to share and to subscribe to Geography Journey.